So, yes, we begin with that breaking news, this news hour. The uh, military wing of Hamas, the Qassam Brigade, says it's released two more Israeli captives after mediation from Qatar and Egypt. It says they were released for humanitarian reasons. Our correspondent, Sarah Harrod, is live in occupied East Jerusalem for us. But first, uh, let's go to Tarek Abu Azoum, who's in Khan Yunus in Gaza. So, Tarek, first up, what are you hearing there in Gaza about the release of these two captives? Yes, that's true. Uh, today, the military wing of Hamas al Qassam Brigade has uh, posted in Telegram platform that they had released uh, two uh, Israeli hostages who are dual nationalities uh, today after being suggested before to release them due to humanitarian uh, reasons. Uh, this time, uh, the, uh, the military brigade of Hamas had announced that they will release them without any, uh, anything, any, uh, any charge uh, for them. Also, those two hostages uh, were released due to humanitarian, uh, to humanitarian reasons. Uh, mainly while before the Israeli uh, occupation government refused to receive those hostages without having any clear illustration why uh, behind the reason of uh, not uh, receiving those hostages. Those hostages have been uh, delivered to the uh, regional mediators in order to be later uh, handed over to the Israeli side, uh, uh, to the Israeli side uh, right now. So uh, these kinds of uh, release, uh, this is the second time that uh, the military ring of Hamas released hostages before they have released two hostages, a mother and a daughter who were holding the American nationality. Uh, later, they were, uh, they were released uh, and they were handed over to the Egyptian side in order to be delivered to Israel. So these kinds of steps have been taken by uh, the Palestinian fighters in order to uh, bab the way for further kind of prisoner swaps in the future. Uh, meanwhile, the, uh, on the ground there in Gaza, the bombardment is relentless. It's just continuing in an unrelenting fashion, uh, just as a third convoy is arriving. Well, uh, Israel keeps bounding the Gaza Strip with thousands of strikes that really put massive destruction to residential building, industrial sectors, and even to private and public uh, properties. Uh, during the last hour, massive bombardment took place in Jabalia refugee camp. Also, a uh, three-story building was leveled to the ground. Uh, uh, one Palestinian was killed, and other uh, were uh, and other injuries were reported. Uh, also, in uh, Deir el Balah, uh, in uh, Deir el Balah, there was a residential flat was destroyed. In addition. A further strike took place in a Zawaida, where a residential house was leveled to the ground, and the number of casualties also have been reported. Uh, till this current moment, uh, more than uh, 400 Palestinians uh, have been killed uh, amid the ongoing Israel strikes on the besieged territory. All right, Tarek, we'll leave it there for the moment. So Tarek Abu Azoum in Khan Yunus in Gaza. Uh, let's uh, bring in Sarah Harat, whose life was in occupied. East Jerusalem and Sarah. So, what about this release of the two hostages? How is news of that release going down? Well, interestingly, I was just hearing Tarek there saying that Hamas said that they're dual nationals, but what's being reported over here uh, in Israel is that um, they're actually Israeli citizens. They say, uh, and of course, none of this is actually officially confirmed, but they're saying that they're uh, two women that are elderly. Uh, they've named them as Yurit Yitzhak and uh, Yoshaved Lifshitz. Uh, one of them being 79 and one of them being an 85-year-old. So still at the moment, information is coming through. It's not clear exactly the details as to, for example, their nationality, as I was just saying. And, you know, the last two um, had uh, U.S. citizenship. If these two are Israelis, it will at least calm uh, the temper amongst uh, uh, families of those that have been held captive because there have been concerns that uh, people with dual citizenship or foreign citizenship, even were being made priority. Israel has said that it's not involved in any of the mediations with Hamas. Um, and, of course, we know that Qatar and Egypt, especially Qatar, uh, with the help of the U.S., has been uh, across this and making sure uh, that this is uh, one of the conditions they put forward as the releasing of some of these uh, captives. All right, Sarah, thanks for that. Uh, Sarah Harrett, more with you later. Well, earlier I spoke with Azama Hamdan, a senior spokesman for Hamas, about the two Israeli captives that have been released. Here's what he had to say. It was clear, uh, we have uh, declared uh, on Friday that we were ready to release four to uh, and another two Israelis, uh, women. Uh, at that time, the Americans uh, accepted uh, to have the, two, uh, those two women back, but the Israelis rejected that. Prime Minister Netanyahu rejected that, but now he has accepted that.
maybe under the pressure of uh, uh, the street. So have they actually been released now? What is the process and when will they be returned to Israel? Well, they were already released, although the Israelis did not respect uh, what we have agreed uh, on. Uh, they did not follow the uh, uh, rules which was uh, discussed anyway. That shows how the Israelis are not committed to anything. They are not committed to what... Uh, this, this whole release was done in, in mediation with Qatar and Egypt. So, so what did Hamas get in return for this release and, and that you say that Israel has not adhered to? In fact, we get nothing. We release them uh, for humanitarian uh, issues. Uh, but we were talking about the process itself. Uh, everyone knows that uh, we want to guarantee the, the, the safety of uh, the two women. So we asked to stop bombing Gaza at least for the time to release them, sending them to, to the Red Cross and then turning them to the authorities. So the Israelis did not follow that uh, at uh, according to what we have agreed on. Anyway, it shows that there was on the Israeli side, there is no uh, trust can uh, 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 be talking about. You can't trust the Israeli side, and it shows how they do not uh, accept to follow the rules all the time. Okay, well, so an Israeli military spokesperson said on Sunday that more than 212 people are currently being held in Gaza. Presumably, that is now 210. Do we now have a prospect for more uh, captives to be released? Well, uh, I, I think it was clear from uh, in the first time that we are not talking about uh, the militants. The militants are war prisoners, and if you want to talk about them, we have to talk about prisoners in exchange, as every note. But uh, we have talked about some civilians who were kept in Gaza, and we consider those civilians as guests. They are not uh, uh, hostages. They will be uh, sent back home uh, as soon as there is a special conditions uh, guarantee their safety and not being killed by the Israeli bombing, not being killed by the Israelis in order to say those people were killed. So that happened on Friday. We hope that we may happen better than uh, what happened today, but anyway, uh, we will uh, we will keep saying more. Is is responsible for killing of those people because they don't care about their lives. They just want to kill more people. Do you not have a big problem with these captives, given that on the day on October the seventh, ordinary civilians, including the elderly and children were taken, and, and that's just created a huge problem for you, hasn't it? Here, here we are going back to the Israeli lives. Here we are going back to the Israeli lives. We said that the first time we have only war prisoners, soldiers from Israeli army. And then when, when the Israeli army fall down, all the people went inside taking those people. We are just trying to find who is where. And this is a hard job under the bombing of Israelis uh, on Gaza. You can't follow all the lines or, 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 or all the situations while Israel is bombing everywhere. So if they want, if they want to have them back, they have to give the Palestinians a chance to follow all the threads to find where are the people. This is the idea. Uh, uh, those lies were told by the Israelis that those people were taken as hostages. It still lies, and what we have done in the last uh, in last Friday and today it shows how they are, they were lying. Uh, that is Azama Hamdan, a senior spokesman uh, for Hamas, speaking to us from Beirut about the two Israeli captives that have been released. Uh, let's return now to occupied East Jerusalem. Sarah Harris is there for us, and Sarah, so Azama Hamdan, uh, they're saying that the possibility of 50 captives being released, as is being reported in the Israeli media, simply not true. Yeah, and it's interesting because, again, we still haven't heard uh, from the Israeli government. We haven't heard from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on this at all. Um, and Israeli media tends usually to get this right. But there's, it's a real quagmire for all of 
those involved. You have Israel that's insisting that it's not going to negotiate at all with Hamas. It's um, many times been saying that Hamas releasing captives is a form of propaganda, uh, trying to prove to the world that, it, that it's not um, as uh, in what, we, what uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said is that it's not a terrorist organization um, and trying to paint themselves in a good light. And this is a line that he's used many times and says he won't entertain any sort of mediation with them or any conditions. Well, of course, Hamas, you just heard there, are saying that they've, re they've required conditions that Israel has agreed upon. I doubt very much that Israel will say that it's agreed on anything. It's very much uh, told its public, which has been increasingly asking questions as to when are these captives going to be released. Um, uh, even just to get some information from the government, they're telling us, is very difficult. They said that uh, they felt, have felt that this hasn't been a priority. If those two captives, at least, that have been released now are Israeli, that could potentially appease a lot of the family members, a lot of those that are concerned for their loved ones uh, that have been taken across, because so far the focus has seemed to be on those with dual nationals or foreign nationals. And of course, um, because this involves many other countries, it not, ju not just the US, but a lot of other citizens from other countries. So it'll be interesting to see if Israel is going to be responding to any of these claims uh, this evening. Um, they have often done so in the past, but sometimes it takes a while. And they have uh, very much uh, confirmed many times that they, again, will not be involved in any form of negotiation. What we do know is that Qatar is very much pivotal to this with the help of the US as well. But this also ties into the question as to whether there's going to be a ground offensive anytime soon. Because, of course, um, for many, some people are saying the delay in a ground offensive is to ensure the release of these captives. Sarah, thanks for that. Sarah Harratt, uh, live for us in occupied East Jerusalem. Thanks a lot.